Yeah, hello and welcome to the Fen, proudly brought to you by George's Fine Meats, Cherry Brook and Five Star Real Estate. Very special edition, this one. Horsey with you alongside the great man, Gary, Jimmy, Jack. And Gaz, I believe we have a special guest today. Yes, Horsey, we do, mate. Look, it's great great to be here for the Fen once again, season four. Now, we have a special teammate of mine that I've played with at uh, at Balmain, Gary the Wiz Freeman is our special guest for today. Gaz, welcome to the program. <laughs> Thanks, Gaz. You forgot. Also, we did play against each other. At the same time. I, I still remember that game in '88, the World Cup <laughs> final. Well, I watched it the other day. You picked him up and drove me into the ground. Into the ground. I reckon you get 25 weeks now. <laughs> <that tackle. laughs> I guess. I'd probably get six months. Yeah, you're probably right there. You could have. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember a story in that World Cup final in '88. Yeah, we played the Kiwis, um, and and uh, you've ran in the middle of the ruck, and Big Block was there waiting for you, and he's giving you a big stiff arm, <laughs> and as you could do back in those days, he said, "If you run here again, Freeman, if you run here again, Freeman, I'm going to bite your head off." <laughs> And Wiz looked at him as quick as a flax and said, well, if you did block, it'd be the first time in life you have any brains in your head. <laughs> so, Wiz, you played, you played a bit of test footy. Uh, you came to Balmain in 1988. How, how did you get to Balmain? Who signed you? And what were your first impressions of each other? Uh, mate, look, if, if I'm going to just go back a step, back in 86 yep. when I first made the, the Kiwis, uh, back then there was a rule in place for Kiwis that they had to play six tests or more to come over here to play for Australia. And there was a $35,000 um, uh, transfer fee that they had to pay. And St. George actually talked to me in 86. I went around there. I still got the jersey they gave me. Really? Um, I still know where the house is where I was supposed to live. Yeah, that <laughs> close. got there. Wow. Um, so that was in 86. And I played my last, you know, the, the sixth test match in 87. Um, and I had a chance to go either go to Newcastle or go into uh, the Balmain Tigers, come out of nowhere. Rich Cook, my father-in-law, uh, who's, who's passed now, but he talked to Barnsley. Um, Barnsley saw me play the last test in 87. Then he goes, look, uh, we want you to sign with Balmain. I looked at the two sides of what were being assembled for, A, the Tigers, and then Newcastle, of course, being a brand-new club. And I thought it'd be more beneficial for me going to uh, the Tigers, which yep. in the end, mate, was a fantastic um, four years that I had there. Um, you know, two grand finals, semi-finals. Um, it was just a... Great bunch of blokes to play with, and and they just they just love their footy, mate. So, yeah, that, that's also I got there. Barnsley still owes me a car because that never turned up, and uh, <laughs> I'm still waiting for that key. Jimmy yeah, probably so. got it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jimmy drove it away at training. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh no, um, who was the St George halfback in '86, '87 around then? Who was, was who was he? Who was it? Steve Lanane, I think. Steve Lanane or someone. Uh, no. Perry Haddock was the halfback. Oh, Perry Haddock. Perry Haddock. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. So okay. I actually went and met them at the club and everything. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah. You got a jersey. Yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. What, um, yeah. yeah, so what did you think of each other? Jimmy, what did you think when Wiz turned up for the first time? Uh, well, they just said, oh, this, this little Gary Freeman, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't shut up. He's just, he's just a go-getter. <laughs> like he's, he just tackles everything that moves. He's, he's just, he's, he's just like the Wiz. He's like the Wiz Steve Martin. He, he's very similar. Just barking orders, left, right and centre. And, and I must say, Gaz was, he had, had football ability and, and he got better and better and better. And, and I, look, he's not a big bloke. And, you know, he's about probably maybe 80 kilos. And, you know, um, he was probably the most courageous bloke I probably played with um, and tough and skillful and would, would take on any, would take on Blocker, would take on Greg Dowling. Didn't matter who it was, we would <laughs> take him on. So, you know, and I, and I, lo I love playing with Wiz. I really did love playing. I had a great time playing with him. Um, we had so many great times together. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, and yeah, but just but the thing with Wiz never gave up. He just never gave up. It was didn't matter whatever stage it was in the game. He he'd always lead from, from by example. So you can't ask for more than that than that from a teammate. That was a brilliant privilege, Wiz. Oh, yeah, I just guess that that was just how I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take I'll take the five hundred afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. sending you another message right now on the, on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about that was he went through the disappointment with Alan Jones and he dropped to reserve grade. And, you know, and Jones made the wrong decision there for a bloke called Brian Smith who had said couldn't play. But, you know, Wiz had, had to cop that. Then he had to leave the club. And guess what he did? 
The following year, he goes out and wins the Gold Deli M for the best player in the competition in 1992 <laughs> with the Roosters. Like, yeah. who, did who you, does that? Because uh, East, was, um, East, East didn't even make the finals that year. So did you yeah. did you have yeah. a point to prove that year? Wins? Nah, mate. I, you know what? I, I gave up trying to make points, mate. I, I did that when I first got over here, trying to do some of the things that Gary said and, you know, trying to go up against Mark Geyer and <laughs> some other players, <laughs> Greg Dowling. In the end, I look back and I said, mate, that was just crazy stuff. <laughs> but uh, look, it, it, it probably like made me who I was um, as a player. And uh, I think I got respect off all the other blokes because I didn't back down. Um, no, but it's never. interesting when Jimmy said about in, in 92, um, when I went over to the Roosters, I actually employed a, a full-time trainer, George Asimides, and uh, He's a young guy. He was only 21. He's a bit of a bodybuilder down at Parramatta. And then I was doing some weights. And I'll never forget this, Jimmy. I think you got a little bit heavy too in the 80 kilos. I think Migsy was at <laughs> 71.5 and I put down 72 because I don't want to be lighter than that. <laughs> Mate, I think I might have broken the 80 just, 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 yeah. just the other day. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, and yeah. George, George trained me. Um, he, he, he said to me, look, do you know what you're doing? I said, of course I know what I'm doing. And, um, he trained me for four weeks. I, I think I did a Jimmy Jack on him. I paid him for four weeks and he trained me for five years. So, uh, <laughs> and, and he was the guy that really showed me how to train properly with weights and how to pick them up, how to push and all the rest of it. Uh, got me to a, a, a level. Um, it was quite funny because at that year when I went to training, they did a sprint test over 40 metres and uh, Hugh McGann came up to me and said, um, you, you, you're looking big, Wiz. And I said, oh yeah, thanks, mate. He goes, no, no, no. He said, over the 40 metres, you are the slowest <laughs> in the team. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I did 5.9 or something like that. It was dead set. You could have made a cup of tea and got a biscuit and uh, I'd come back and sat down. I still wouldn't have finished the 40 metres. But it, it was just a new way, new technology of what I was using. And, and that benefited me the next four years. Mate, yeah. still you were fantastic. You were, you were still 37 and still beat them at 37. I remember <laughs> when, when we when we when the Broncos, the Broncos played played the Tigers at Leichhardt Oval. It might have been yep. 89 or 88. And know. and Blocker went, uh, sorry, Wiz went to put the ball in the scrum. And Greg Dowling actually collapsed the scrum and kneed you in the mouth. Yeah. But he, yeah, and knocked and knocked Wiz's teeth out. And really? Wiz got up yeah. and put the ball in the scrum. And Blocker just Blocker just chinned him from the next from the next scrum because he did his yeah. halfback. Then yeah. you could do that back in those days. And then at half time we come in and Wizard, Wizard's mouth was an absolute, you know, it was it was terrible. It was terrible. And <laughs> and it, it was it was. But he, he went out there and played the second half. We we won the game. But to go out there and to lose your teeth the way you did, I mean, oh, that says volumes about how tough he was. Mate, it, it was it was interesting that 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 case really because when I, I didn't even know it was Greg that did it. I didn't even know, mate, because I, I was laying on the ground as, as he hit me. Yeah. Um, and I think Greg McCullum was the referee that day, if, 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 it, if my memory's correct. And mm. then he sent him straight off the field, but Block did virtually hit his headgear off his head. So I think if it actually connected, he would have been in, he would have been in yeah. hospital with me the next day. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, we, um, I think after that, went straight to the, the, the dentist, special special dentist you got to go. And they take all the roots out because all your teeth, are, you know, they're going to die anyway. But I do remember going back to the dentist on the Monday afternoon and the guy goes, oh, have, have all the, the, the nerves been taken out and all that sort of stuff? I went, yeah, yeah, it's all good. And he stuck one of those steel things up. Oh, my God. <laughs> the biggest F word guy you have ever known oh, because one man. of the roots was still stuck in there. He goes, oh, oh sorry about that. He said, we have that Give you another and getting the needles, as you know, mate, they hurt like you know, oh, man. I was actually asked to give evidence to Greg uh, against them and I refused. Why? I went, well, Why? mate, if you can't take the referee's uh, word on it, there's no way you're getting me to say a word against anybody. anybody. So, is that, is that like because, a, yeah, because what they did to me in '88, um, evidence. they um, you know, players <laughs> code, yeah, when I got suspended, they like uh, the yeah. shit me completely. What was that, mate? I was just saying they should have asked Blocker to give some evidence. That, it would have been a good case. <laughs> yeah. well, with, with these. <laughs> yeah. Which you one say, you want, left or right? <laughs> did you say something about your suspension, Wiz? Yeah, mate. Yeah, I did, mate. I was, 89. Uh, 89. Thanks, Dale. That's the wife just piping up there. She's got a better memory than <laughs> me. Oh, Julie Ann. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> the the 89. 
so, yeah. So we played Newcastle, and I think um, it was one of the, the roughest and toughest games I've, I've played and played in. Um, and that was against uh, Mark Sargent. And, you know, in that, he actually, Bill Harrigan was the referee. And then um, Bill actually sent a bloke off for eye gouging. Um, and then I got cited. Yet I'm the only person in the history of the game to be a foot off the ground uh, to be done for eye gouging. So, you know, it's a bit disappointing. If they thought I was really guilty, Stephen Lane, I think, got 22 weeks. Les Boy got 25, just off my top of my head. And then they gave me 15. So just, they, just you know, they discredited Joke. Bill Harrigan, uh, had an eye surgeon, eye doctor there. Um, they, um, they, they didn't even know. I didn't know who they were. Um, and back in those days, if you didn't have new evidence, you couldn't get the hearing reheard, right? You couldn't get an appeal. Um, and then the... Uh, Ron Bernanke, the, the lawyer, uh, he's yep. a Mad Balmain supporter. Um, yep. And he, he actually got an eye surgeon or a doctor. They come and gave evidence and they just virtually told him they didn't know what they were talking about. Bill Harrigan went up for me. Junior went up for me. So those two guys there, he's the referee yeah. in the game. Yeah. And then you got Junior who, I'm telling you now, Junior said to me, if I thought you were guilty, which, mm. I'm yep. not coming up to support you. And for him to do that, mate, was... Was amazing, yeah. and he didn't do it as a friend. He did it because he knew it wasn't true. Yeah, it wasn't your yeah. character. That's right. Yeah, hundred percent. I um, we need to talk about eighty nine. Wiz, I've spoken to yep. Jimmy many times about this. Um, have yep. you ever watched the game back? Uh, there were so yep. many what if moments in that match. Oh, do, you, you know, do you do you think if only does it haunt you or anything like that? Oh, mate, I, I, look, I stopped seeing the specialists about a week ago, but, that, but thanks for bringing it up again. <laughs> back, to, back to rehab. <laughs> yeah, I'm still seeing him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yeah. go have a beer after this, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, we will, oh, yeah. Look, I, yeah. I, I think, you know, I've heard the, the, the Canberra boys go, oh, we, we knew we had it in the bag. Mate, Bullshit. If, 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 if Migsy had scored that try on that left-hand edge, the game was yeah. over. Um, there was probably five other opportunities where we probably dropped the ball at some stage. Uh, yeah. Myself included, going down the middle with Sarah giving me the ball um, in, the, in the first half. Uh, so there was just so many things that just made it. We just couldn't get ourselves over the line, which is really, really disappointing because, you know, I thought we'd done enough um, in that game uh, to, to win it. Um, but I know how disappointing we were, but also the fans because, you know, they had the weight. To 2005 before they won then one one and that was West Tigers not you know Balmain Tigers yeah yeah and and, and look the, the the decision by Harrigan to penalize Bruce Maguire for using Kevin Walters as a shepherd or sorry Steve Walters <laughs> if we're the, if we're the bunker these days we're the bunker or captain's call that, that would be overturned like that you know that that rule doesn't exist, and we would have got the penalty rather than them. And they went up and scored and got back to the game at fourteen points to eight. So you know there are moments. Megsy getting ankle tapped. You know it, Mal Mal hit him with his arm guard, not with his hand, his arm guard. So an arm yeah. guard's about half an inch thick. If it doesn't hit him, Megsy, it scores in the corner. It's all over. If the, Megsy the, weighs yeah. more than seventy one and a half kilos, he probably scores. He bounced. Over, <laughs> no, yeah. no. Yeah. Megzi was he was flying. He was <laughs> flying, Megzi. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, yeah I, no. I gave him that pass and we'd we'd actually, Jimmy, I don't know if you remember, we practiced that. We went and watched we play. I mean, Canberra yeah. played South Sydney. And then Warren yeah. Ryan said to us, This is the play we want to put on, and you'll score a try. And mate, it was just if if I'd actually gone probably another yard forward and given the ball, Megzi goes untouched. So, it was called crash. Wiz, it was called yep. crash. That was yep. it. Because I would back up Bruce Maguire. Mal come in to yep. get Bruce. Yep. And Megsy was just floating out wide. And you just threw it straight in front. And Megsy was through. Yeah. You know, anyway. so it's <laughs> moments like that. Sorry, boys. I just got to I'm depressed. Gotta, Hey, I just got to go and ring my specialist again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I won't talk about 1988 then. We'll leave that one. <laughs> Anymore. That'll do. Move on. Why didn't, um, actually, why didn't you, why didn't things click with you and AJ when he came to the club? Oh, mate, in, in all honesty, mate, I, I stopped believing in how he was coaching, uh, to be brutally honest. And I, I think in the end, I was more worried about that than, than playing footy. Um, and I, I ended up playing, I think, 12 games in reserve grade, uh, but going on to represent New Zealand um, and playing in three test matches there and getting them out of the match. So, it was you know, a disgrace, it, Wiz. 
You can't say it, but I'll say it. It was a disgrace. Anyway, it was well, a disgrace. Like, you, you learn a lot about um, yourself um, when things like that really hit home that you, you know you can play. I actually went to see Keith Barnes, who's, who's champion. Like I just said, Keith, look, mate, I'm better than this. I'm better than the guy that you've got there. There's yeah. no way he's going to play me anymore. Um, so, mate, I made the decision to leave, um, which is a, which is a pretty brave move when you look at it because I had nowhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was and, and I told Barnes, he said, mate, which Barnes, he loved this part. I said, just keep the contract money for the next, because I've actually just signed for four years. And Alan Jones had actually really? rang me from, yeah, Alan Jones had actually rang me to, to, make, to make me stay because I, the, the Dragons had come forward um, with Craig Young and put an offer forward that I was actually going to uh, go to go to, and play there. But they, you know, Alan James rang me and said, we want you to stay. We want you to be part of this team moving forward, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but in the end, it, it just wasn't going to work with him and I. We just didn't see eye to eye. And I think back in those days, mate, I was a little bit, um, you know, brutal when it comes to what I wanted and what I wanted to succeed. So it was better that I moved on. Um, uh, but I, know, I do remember you're a the winner. first game. That, that, you, about, you're a winner. Don't tell me you're brutal. You're a winner. That's what you are. One hundred percent winner. Yeah. So don't apologise for being a winner, young man. Yeah, they remember. could use. <laughs> <laughs> I know who said that too because I heard that in twenty-five thousand speeches. Um, I do remember that that first game when I played for the Roosters. We're playing uh, the Tigers, uh, and Alan was walking in. I couldn't help myself. I had to walk up and just shake his hand and wish him all the best. And I think I said, look, I wish you all the best, but you know you're going to come second today, so I'll beat you by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened? Did you win? Yeah, yeah I scored two tries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, who, um, who was the best player you played with or against in your career? You can't say Jimmy Jack. No, nah, mate, you know what? I, I I did something like this the other day with, with the Kiwi blokes like Mark Graham's up there, the Kurt, Kurt Sorensen. You know, I'm lucky enough to play with Kevin Tammany, but then I played with Block and... You know, Jimmy and Wayne Pierce and Bruce McGuire and Benny. You know, God, oh, mate, I was so lucky to play with such great players. You know, to bring out one and say he was the best of the best, man, it'd yeah. be so friggin' hard, mate. Like, I don't know how you do it. Like, I played yeah. against Wally, you know, a number of times. Uh, we didn't really get on that well on the field, especially when I played for New Zealand. Um, but, you know, just... What about I this bloke? Played... What, what about this bloke? Sterlo. Oh, mate, I, I played. I only played against Thurlow like three times, once in the test match, and then when he was playing for Parra, and that's when he hurt his shoulder. Um, but, you know, just to play against him in 86, when he was the number one halfback, to get a chance to play against them. Like, if you're coming from New Zealand, you're playing against Australia, I wasn't too sure if I should get his autograph or try and match him. I wasn't too sure which one. So I did both. <laughs> <laughs> what about toughest? So was, it, was, it, was there a warrior, a, the toughest guy out there? Oh. It's the same sort of I, question. I'll, I always rate um, Bruce McGuire as one of the toughest along with Block that I play with and then throw in, you know, Quinton Pongia, McCracken, mm. Kevin Tamity, you know, those guys, mate, just... Wow. They're scary players. Good players yeah. <laughs> what about Benny? Oh, Benny, mate, super tough. You know what? Mm. It, it, you, know, you look back in your time and you look at the footy now and you say... People say, who could make it, you know, because the game's so different. Well, you adapt as a kid and all the rest of it. But Benny being one guy, he, he can make it easy. Make it we, easy, man. He, he, he was gifted. He was were, you, were you there when uh, Brad Izzard snapped him in half? Was that? Um, I picked the ball up from Benny after he dropped it and said, what would you do that for? <laughs> <laughs> did you take his pulse? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just grabbed the ball. <laughs> I said, what did you drop it for? And he couldn't talk. <laughs> mate, that's, a mate of mine was actually watching that on Fox Sports. Um, and he rang me, he goes, mate, he said, does anyone die in this game? <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough game. I mean, yeah, Johnny yeah. Cartwright had a punch up with Bruce McGuire and he got knocked out, Johnny Cartwright. Then he got sent off, he elbowed yeah. Benny in the, in the head. Uh, yeah. Oh, mate, it was just, that was one of the brutal games I've ever played. I think yeah. Mark Guy tried to take my head off and, and uh, Jimmy's at the same time. So, yeah, she was an interesting Interesting day in the office that game, mate. That was that yeah, was yeah. Did you, did you, do you remember eighty eight was was a great run, and then we sort of got it together, and then Ellery came along, and Ellery just sparked us to go right through to the grand final, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Now, what, well, what mate, he, I he's a fantastic player. I don't know if you remember that eighty eight that we played Great Britain and and in, in a test series, and whoever won that test series then 
played the World Cup at the end of the year, and we we won. I came off the bench, scored two tries in Christchurch, and then we yep. played you guys um, in the World Cup. And then Ellery, yep. we had a bit of a, a push and shove in that game. And then next minute we're we're training together. I'm I don't know if Ellery's a really good swimmer. He said he had something in his eye because I'm a terrible swimmer. So in that run, we did, went for runs as all the all the other blokes were swimming. I uh, said, so don't you swim either, Ellery? He goes, oh, no, I'm a good swimmer, but I'd rather run. I'm like, yeah, right. Sure, you're about <laughs> yeah. as good as me. My nickname for swimming was uh, The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you have your socks down every game? And why was that? Well, I tell pe- people I have big calf muscles, <laughs> but that's not true. That's not true. Um, <laughs> my first ever game for the, the Balmain side, was, we were at Paramount Stadium, was a trial. And I had the jersey tucked in. I had my hair done. My socks were all tied up with the laces and all that. I thought I was looking hot. And I, I had the big long pants on, but then I realised at Balmain you had the shorter shorts. Yes. That's what you've got to have. So I got those straight away the following week. But it was that hot that day. I think it was about 32. And I had the jersey out, socks down. I said, this is too hot for me. And uh, you know, coming from New Zealand, I didn't realise what how much the heat played a part. And then from that day on, I just left them down. People used to blow up, you know, pull your socks up up. But when I went back to New Zealand, I went and watched a few games at Carlaw Park. There's probably about four halfbacks out there with their socks down. <laughs> <laughs> so I was starting a revolution, mate. <laughs> hey, what was your what was your most favourite venue? You mentioned Carlaw Park. Was that the number oh, one? Carlaw Park, Leichhardt Oval, um, Suncourt Stadium, and the old stadium when you played Test matches there at Brisbane. Lang Park. Lang Park, it was called. Yes, yeah, sorry, lads. And then yeah. um, Old Trafford, Leeds home ground was. Tremendous to Hittingly. play on, mate. Yeah, Headingley. You know, yeah. Wembley. Yeah. Wembley. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting and messages you know from my wife. And, and, and the one ground I freaking hated playing it, and thank God they didn't play the World Cup final in 88 there, was Carlaw Park. I, we went to the, remember, we went to uh, the, the rugby union ground, and it was packed. Yeah. There's 45,000 people there. Yeah, Eden Park. Eden Park. Mm. Eden Park. Eden Park, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you'd have played, if you'd have played at the mud at Carlaw Park, gee whiz, it would have been a different game because it was like a bowling green playing at, at Eden oh, Park. Yeah. It was it was twenty four nil by bloody half time. It was all over. Um, yeah. But it would have been remember, a different. You, you a remember Wally having a cigarette at half time uh, when he yeah. broke his arm? <laughs> he had a bunger. Imagine Wally had a bunger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the captain, yeah. What, uh, Wiz, was there a hated venue? Somewhere you hated going? Um, no, because they're all new for me when I first yeah. came over. I couldn't wait to play at Sharks Park, you know, New, Newcastle. I, I did, that, the parks didn't worry me, you know, but I, I just wanted to play in those grounds and then succeed, you know. He was used to playing in paddocks, that's why. <laughs> yeah. but at least they mowed them just a couple more come on you sheep get off the field everything was an upgrade from the paddocks where the sheep were that's right um just a couple more to finish we've got no you're probably going to go yeah, hey uh we've got a lot of paramount people who listen also 1996 yep. you went to the eels just for your final year why yes. didn't it work out that year for para because there's so many big name signings and fell short of the finals mate we're only one game short um, and the last game we played Penrith, we had to beat Penrith to make the, the top eight, and we should have beaten them. And I think we lost, I think we lost by four points. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, we, we were missing, I think, about four key players in that game that they, they were injured. Um, made it, it was just one of those years where you have so many dominant players, sometimes yeah. it's hard yeah. to see who should lead, and yep. sometimes taking a step back for me was always hard. And there was always strong uh, other players who were strong-minded players too. It was, it was tough, mate. Tough place to play because if you went to the Roosters, you know you, you were in charge. Whereas you know, the McCrackens and the Pays and the Smiths and the Dimmicks and the Freemans mm. and you know the Rapers and all that sort of stuff, and you go in, you know, yeah. how, how do you all fit in? So I think if we, if, I would have liked to have one more year, but um, but Bryce Smith gave me a letter on said don't come back Monday, so <laughs> um, it was a bit d- disappointing. Is that how it finished? Yeah, 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 mate. Yeah, they just said, um, uh, yeah, they just sent, sent a letter and said, yeah, not required next year. That was no, it. And you, so, you just, Red Rover. so you just said that'll do? Yeah, mate, I, I actually um, spoke to Junior and asked if I could come down and help with the West Tigers. And I did some training down there and took all the young guys, Luke O'Donnell and all the rest of it, were down there when I was there. Um, and then we went and had a trial game and 
and I knew they didn't have a, didn't have a halfback. So, so see the genius, might have done all the training, physically fit, you know, just get me out there and let me have a run. He goes, all right, we'll get your gear. And I forgot to take my boots. Otherwise, I would have played, I reckon. Yeah. Which is probably probably safer. I probably didn't. I would have been 36 then. That would have been interesting. Oh, mm. man. Hey, just mm. to finish up, mate, career highlight and low light. Have you got one? Um, I don't really focus on the low lights, mate. Yeah. I, you know, I think they they come again. You, know, you, you focus on the, the, the good things. Playing my first ever test match in 86 uh, against Australia and the Sydney Cricket Ground was one of the greatest highlights ever for me. Um, the grand finals, um, winning the Daly M, the, the first Kiwi to ever do that. I think that was really, really special to put, um, I think, New Zealand players on the map that they're here and they, they can even do better. And, and a lot of players have gone on to win their pl- pl- positions and the gold, which is fantastic for our country. Um, and, and, and just being involved, um, just playing footy, mate, just having Beautiful. a good time. And, and I think being remembered that, you had a crack on the field and yeah, that was it. I, you know, the, there's one thing I've got to say. Remember the, the second row for um, Peter Johnson? Yeah, For Johnston. Illawarra. The hitman. And he played at Parra. Yeah, yeah. He knocked me out four years in a row. <laughs> with <his> Seriously? <laughs> four years in a row he got me. Did you? I, I don't know why. Did you offend and him? Then, well. You, do, you were chirpy. Head. You were chirpy out there, Wiz. Did you have no, something no, to say? No. He got me when I wasn't even talking. That's what disappointed me. Um, but I ended up playing with him at Parramatta, and I wasn't too sure how that would go. It was either going to be a punch up or we get on. Mm. But he was actually a pretty good blow. But yeah, four years in a row, he got me bugger. <laughs> got me good. I think the last game I played with the, the, at the Roosters, I oh, know my, in, my, yeah, in my first year, and we walked going off the field, and he hit me in the head. I woke up in the changing rooms. Jeez. That's, that's how bad it was, mate. Yeah, it got me real good. Yeah, it's all changed now. Did you go back on? No, shit, no. I, was still, I woke up in the shade. I go, what happened? They said, game's over. <laughs> <laughs> like, Gus, I'll give you the last one, right? Yeah. Played at Penrith. Peter Johnson got me again. They walked me off the field, go around. Someone hands me the phone. It's Gus going, what are you doing? I said, mate, who's this? He goes, it's Gus Field, the coach. I went, oh, really? So what am I doing on the side? I had no, I can't <laughs> remember walking off. And then I went back on and scored a try. And then I went up to Johnson and said, oh, well, you still couldn't get me. Because you knocked me out, but I still scored a try. <laughs> As you what do. I, I, actually yeah, want to, I actually wanted to ask you when you left when you left East, Uncle Nick Politis doesn't like losing players. How did that go down? Mate, it's, um, it, it, to, to be honest about this, and um, I actually agreed to stay at East for a year and an option going with Jack's way. Um, no one, there's not too many people that know this, but the, the worries actually come to my house in, in 1993 um, um, and sat down with me, the chairman and then the, uh, the CEO, and said they're going to bring this warrior side into the competition. And they brought over the jersey. I knew what the name was. I knew when they were coming in wow. two years before this. And I, I kept it on the, on the low. So they wanted me from uh, 95 onwards, and Jack's was going to be 94, 95. So I said to Jack, look, can we just play 90, 94 and then I'll go to the Warriors? They wanted me to captain the side, and mm. he didn't like that. And then all hell broke loose, and and then it was probably better that I left anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So it was pretty disappointing because there was five games to go that year, and we were only we had to win two out of the five to make the semis. Um, they won their first one, then the headlines magically said they don't need Freeman, and then they lost four games in a row. <laughs> and they should have made the semis. Was that the Warriors yeah. or the Roosters, you mean? And that was the Roosters. Yeah. So they ended up going to the Warriors because they ended up going to Penrith yeah. for two years. And yeah. Stacey Jones, they picked up Stacey Jones, didn't they? So that's where Stacey, Stacey was. Stacey coming in 95. Yeah. 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 Jimmy, yeah. any final yeah, oh, thoughts? Mate. Yeah, look, what a player. I, mean, I love you, Wiz. You know, I love, I love your passion. I, love, <laughs> I just love you full stop. Yeah. That's all I can say. I love you. Oh, it's been great playing with you. And hopefully we'll catch up soon for a for a beer and have a chat. But, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the, the, on the show, mate. And and all the best to you and Julianne and, and the family. And, and hopefully we'll, we'll catch up soon, buddy. But thank you for oh, everything you've done. It's, it's been a great play. Oh, good, Jimmy. Love you, mate. Thanks, Wiz. Yeah, thank thanks for listening at home to the right. Fen. The uh, great Gary Freeman joining us. Uh, Wiz, thanks again for all your time, mate. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Thanks, brother. See you, Jimmy. Yep. Thanks, See you, Jimmy. buddy. Love you, Wizza. See you, boys. Wiz, Wiz. We want Wiz.